Alice, where's Jane? She's still asleep. Shall we go and wake her up? <laughs> yes. Jane! Wakey-wakey! Hello, you two. I've just been having the most beautiful dream. All about the rainbow you made for me once. Do you remember? Yes, we said a spell for it. Oh, look! My rainbow's come back again. I've got a rainbow above my bed. The first of its colours is bright, bright red. Then comes orange, then yellow and green. The loveliest colours I've ever, ever seen. Next comes blue, like the blue of the sea. Indigo and violet are the others I see. When the sun comes out through the falling rain, my rainbow makes a coloured arch above the counterpane. Rainbow, rainbow, come again soon. Shine on in my bedroom till the coming of the moon. Rainbow, rainbow, come again soon. Shine on in my bedroom till the coming of the moon. Doris, what's that noise? It's Dotty the dragon. Oh, soup plates and soap flakes. I've dropped all my best cups and saucers. What am I to do? You'll just have to magic some more, Dotty. Oh, hello, hamsters. Didn't see you there. Magic some more cups and saucers? I simply haven't got time. I've been so busy in the kitchen. Do you know what happened the other day? No, Dotty. Well, I'll tell you. Dotty's Magic Tea Party. I was very excited because my three favourite nephews were coming to dinner. I just finished making a pie for them when they arrived. Come in, come in, I said, hugging and kissing them all. Oh, it's lovely to see you. They like visiting me because something amazing always seems to happen. After we had chatted about what they'd been doing at Dragon School and how far they could fly now, I said, you must be starving. Go and wash your paws and sit at the table. I gave each of my little guests a piece of pie with some potatoes, sprouts and parsnips. Come on, eat up. It'll do you so much good. But the little dragons all made faces and looked very unhappy. I'm not hungry, Aunt Dot, said one. I've got a tummy ache, wailed another. Nonsense, I cried. You'll never grow big like me and have nice shiny scales if you don't eat your dinner. But Aunt Dot, we only like eating sweets, cried the little dragons. I thought for a moment, and then, with a wave of my magic dish mop, I said, to make little dragons eat their tea, colour the food as bright as can be. <laughs> At once, the food changed colour. The sprouts were now purple. The potatoes had turned blue. The parsnips were striped red and green, and the I was a lovely shade of pink. <laughs> the little dragon squealed with delight. It all looks like sweets. And they ate until their plates were clean. Well, since you've been so good, I've a surprise for you, I said. I took a large bowl of ice cream from the fridge. The ice cream had changed from white to bright tartan. Oh, wow, cried the little dragons, jumping up and down. They had never seen tartan ice cream before, and they spooned it into their mouths as fast as they could. But I had noticed something else in the fridge. 
the lettuces had turned mauve, the sausages green with red spots, and the cucumber was orange and blue. And there was someone who was not at all pleased about the different coloured food. My cat turned up his nose and walked off in a huff when he saw rainbow-coloured cat food and green milk. Yes, dear? What colour am I? What colour? Why, you funny little bundle of fur. You're brown, of course. Hamsters are always brown, Morris. Yes, but look, I'm pretending to be a horse. Even if you were a horse, you could still be brown, you daft thing. Well, supposing I'm a, a, a cherry. What colour am I? If I were a cherry or a juicy strawberry or a little poppy, what would you colour me? If I were the sun shining on the trees, making all the lemons grow, what would you colour these? If I were a clear sky on a lovely day, or a great big ocean, what colour would you say? If I were the grass growing on the ground, or a leafy treetop, what colour have you found? If I were a swan swimming on the lake, or a passing cloud, what colour would I make? If I were some licorice in a sweetie shop, or a tyre on a car, what colour have you got? Black. I beg your pardon, Dotty? Black, dear. Car tyres are black. Licorice is black, even in my kitchen. Oh, I see. Oh, you are clever, Dotty. Sometimes I think you're the cleverest magic dragon on Magic Mountain. That's because I'm the only magic dragon on Magic Mountain. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, come along, Doris. I want to put my feet up and listen to a lovely story. Who's going to tell me one? Nigel is. Yes, it's the story of Little Red Riding Hood. There was once a little girl who was called Little Red Riding Hood because she often wore a cloak and hood of red velvet. Her grandmother had made them for her as a special present. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother gave her a basket of food. Little Red Riding Hood, she said, your grandmother is not well and cannot go out. Will you take this basket of fruit and cakes to her? Of course I will, replied Little Red Riding Hood. Now hurry straight there, said her mother, and don't talk to any strangers on the way. So Little Red Riding Hood waved goodbye and set off for her grandmother's cottage. When she had been walking for some time, she met a wolf. He smiled politely. Hello, little girl. And where are you off to? he asked. Little Red Riding Hood remembered that her mother had told her not to talk to strangers. But this stranger seemed so nice. So, Little Red Riding Hood smiled back at him and said, My name is Little Red Riding Hood, and I'm going to visit my grandma. She lives in a cottage in the middle of the forest. I'm sure she would like a bunch of flowers, as well as that basket of delicious food, said the cunning wolf. Oh, yes, how kind of you to think of that, replied Little Red Riding Hood. And she wandered off the path to pick a bunch of primroses. Meanwhile, the wolf ran ahead of Little Red Riding Hood and found her grandmother's cottage. If I'm clever enough, he thought, I will eat the grandmother and Little Red Riding Hood for my lunch today. The wolf knocked on the door. Then, in a squeaky voice, he called, It's me, Grandma, Little Red Riding Hood. I have come to visit you. Grandmother called out, Lift the latch, my dear, and come in. 
poor grandmother realised her mistake too late. The wolf burst in and swallowed the old lady in one gulp. <coughs> then the wolf put on grandmother's bonnet and shawl and spectacles. He dusted his face with powder and climbed to grandmother's bed to wait for Little Red Riding Hood. Soon she arrived and knocked at the door. It's me, Grandma. I've come to visit you. Lift the latch, my dear, and come in, called the wolf. I've bought you some food, Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood, and I picked you some flowers. Look. Little Red Riding Hood stepped closer and saw the wolf's big ears poking through the bonnet. My, what big ears you have, Grandma. All the better to hear you with, replied the wolf. Come here and give me a kiss. As Little Red Riding Hood went nearer, she saw the wolf's big eyes gleaming. <gasps> oh, Grandma, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my child. The wolf smiled. And Little Red Riding Hood saw his big teeth. She was very frightened. <gasps> and what big teeth you have, she said. All the better to eat you with, cried the wolf, leaping out of bed. He tried to pounce on Little Red Riding Hood, but she pushed the basket over his mouth so he could not bite her. Growling and snarling, the wolf struggled to pull the basket off. Just then, a woodcutter was passing by. He heard the wolf snarling and Little Red Riding Hood help, shouting. Help. He ran into the cottage. You! he cried, seeing the wolf. I've been after you for a long time. He pulled the basket off the wolf's mouth. Please don't hurt me, yelped the wolf. But suddenly, he groaned and held his stomach. Oh, ouch, he cried. Next moment, he began to hiccup. <coughs> the wolf hiccuped and hiccuped. Then he gave one enormous <coughs> hiccup. And little Red Riding Hood's grandmother popped back out of his mouth. That'll teach you to eat me, she said, waving her walking stick. I kept prodding the wolf with this until he let me go. The woodcutter chased the wolf away, while Little Red Riding Hood gave her grandmother a big hug. What a brave girl you are, said her grandmother. She kissed Little Red Riding Hood and waved goodbye. <laughs> Little Red Riding Hood hurried home. And this time, she did not stop to speak to anyone on the way. Hello, Doris. 
Have you seen the cherry tree in Magic Garden? Oh, it's fantastically, hugely, enormously big. And it's got fantastically huge... Yes, Morris, I know. It's got some lovely big cherries on it. How do you know? Because I planted that cherry tree. I made up a song about it. Listen. Once I found a cherry stone, I put it in the ground. And when I came to look at it, a tiny shoot I found. The shoot grew up and up each day and soon became a tree. I picked the rosy cherries then and ate them for my tea. You greedy hamster, Doris, eating all those cherries. Oh, come on, Morris, sing. Once I found a cherry stone, I put it in the ground. And when I came to look at it, a tiny shoot I found. The shoot grew up and up each day and soon became a tree. I picked the rosy cherries then and ate them for my tea. Some of your cherries, Doris. Of course you can, Morris, if you're really good. Oh, I'll be good, I promise. Here you are, then. Ooh. Oh, yum, yum. Now, listen, Carol's going to tell us about someone naughty. Who? The naughty paintbrush. <laughs> the little brown paintbrush was fast asleep by the easel. Suddenly, the moon shining through the window woke him up. I can't sleep any more, he said, stretching out his bristles. Now, what shall I do? Looking round the playroom, he saw that everything was tidy. The paints were in their pots, the crayons in their box, and Anne's paintings were drying on the floor. <laughs> I know, said the little paintbrush. I'll do some paintings of my own. So he jumped off the table and onto the floor. First, he found a piece of clean white paper. Then, opening a paint pot, he dipped his head inside and began to work. Splish, splosh, splish, splosh, went the paintbrush. He opened more and more paint pots until the playroom looked like a rainbow. Trying to lift the box of crayons, the paintbrush slipped on some paint and everything fell over with a big bang. Oh, no, said the paintbrush, seeing what he'd done. There was red and blue and yellow paint everywhere. Broken crayons littered the floor and poor Anne's paintings were ruined. <gasps> oh, I've been really naughty, he said. I'd better hide. So he hid under the table. Soon he was fast asleep again. <coughs> Next morning, Anne ran into the playroom. <gasps> oh, what a mess, she cried. I wonder who could have done this? And she began to cry. Underneath the table, the paintbrush woke up. He felt so sorry for what he'd done, he decided to own up straight away. I did it, he said, climbing out from under the table. Oh, you bad brush, said Anne, looking down. How could you? I'll clean everything up and make the room sparkle, said the paintbrush. I promise. All right, said Anne in a cross voice. But if the whole room's not clean, you can do it all over again. And she went out of the playroom. The little paintbrush swept up all the rubbish and put it in the waste basket. Then he put all the broken crayons back in their box and the lids back on the paint pots. Jumping into a jam jar of water, he made himself all wet. Then he scrubbed the paint off the floor and polished the playroom until it shone like a bright new penny. While he was drying off his bristles, Anne came back into the room. Oh, that's much better, she said. But why did you make such a mess in the first place? I only wanted to paint like you, said the paintbrush, but I fell over. 
Will you forgive me? Of course I will, said Anne, giggling. Just as long as you promise never to paint on your own again. Yes, yes, I promise, said the paintbrush. Now then, said Anne, if you jump into my hand, we can do some real painting together. And they both laughed at how silly the little brown paintbrush had been. Doris? Where are those dear little hamsters? I've just said the most complicated spell for making blue and white cups and saucers. And what do you think happened? I ended up with blue and white flying saucers. <coughs> hey, flying saucer, come back. Ah, it's taken my headscarf ah, and my hanky. Ah! Hanky panky. Scarves and handkerchiefs. Hankies and scarves. Lots of colours. Lots of laughs. Red ones, yellow ones look like flags. Sticks with spotted ones make picnic bags. Take a white one, make four knots. You've got a bonnet for beaches and yachts. Brown ones, black ones, cover your eyes. Blind man's buff can be played for a prize. Hide your hankies. Make them appear. Be a conjurer. Hear yeah, people cheer. Hooray! Just one scarf makes a bandit's disguise. Use a frilly hanky for waving goodbyes. Goodbye, flying saucer. Goodbye, headscarf. I'll have to find another hanky and wave properly. Hey, Dotty, what are you doing? Waving goodbye to my headscarf, dear. They don't call you Dotty for nothing, do they? <laughs> don't be so rude to Dotty Morris. Sometimes silly things have a very sensible explanation. Nigel's next story, for instance. The Orange Stripe. <laughs> Andy was a small boy. A very small boy. He wanted to grow and grow and grow. He did exercises early in the morning when he jumped out of bed. But he didn't seem to grow any taller. He ate every scrap of all his meals, but he still didn't seem to grow at all. To see how tall he was, he had a special way of measuring himself. He did it like this. Andy's older brother, Bill, had a gorgeous stripy pullover. And when he was wearing the stripy pullover, Andy would go and stand next to him and put his fingertips flat on the top of his head to see which stripe his head came up to. It was always the same stripe, the orange one. Always. It's no good, said Andy. I'll have to stay this size for the rest of my life. Even though I do exercises and play football and eat all my meals. Yes, agreed Bill. He was puzzled too. He had grown taller. Why didn't Andy? Then one day, something happened to the pullover. The puppy who lived next door came jumping into the kitchen because the door was open. He saw Bill's lovely stripy pullover hanging over the back of a chair. And with a bark of delight, he raced outside with it back into his own garden. There he dug a deep hole and buried the pullover in it. Bill never did know what happened to his pullover. He looked for it upstairs and downstairs, day after day. Then one day Andy said, I think it's time I measured myself again, Bill. You can't. My stripy pullover's gone said Bill. Oh, said Andy. Then we better pretend we've got a stripy pullover. So the boys got some coloured chalks and drew a stripy pullover on the wall outside. Andy stood close to it and put his hand flat on the top of his head. I come to here, he said. So Bill put a cross next to the stripe. It was summertime, and the boys were so busy, it was some weeks before they went outside again to the chalked pullover. Andy stood next to it and held his hand 
flat on the top of his head, and Bill marked the place with a cross. You've gone up a stripe, he shouted. Look! This time the cross is higher than the cross last time. Hooray! I'm growing! I'm growing at last! yelled Andy. Hooray! But why did I never grow higher than the orange stripe on your pullover, Bill? Bill shook his head. He was still puzzled. I just don't know, he said. Do you? Morris, mm. do you know why Andy never grew bigger than the stripe on Bill's pullover? Um, was it because he didn't eat up all his breakfast? No, silly. It was because Bill and Andy were both growing. So the orange stripe got higher and higher as Bill grew taller and taller. See? Oh, I see. Hello, hamsters. Hello, Hello Dotty. Did you ever magic some more cups and saucers? Not quite, dear. Flying saucers, yes. Cups and saucers, no. But that's my magic spells all over. You never know how they're going to turn out. Listen to my magic dish mop spells. With one little wave of my dish mop, there are so many things I can do. Like making ice cream turn tartan and making potatoes go blue. With two little waves of my dish mop, I double my magical powers. If I want, I can even change people into bunches of pink and white flowers. <laughs> With three little waves of my dish mop, my magic's too good to be true. I wish I knew why I'm so clever, but don't ask me, I haven't a clue. I wish I knew why I'm so clever, but don't ask me, I haven't a 